Hi all, welcome back to lesson 2.4, Set Identifier. In this lesson, we'll understand some fundamental concepts about set identifier, and we'll look at various examples of set identifiers. So let's get started. So the first one is full set. As I've mentioned that one represents full set, right? So let's see an example. So let me go to click view. So I'll create a, a text box here, right? And then we'll also just create the, leave the caption on, and then I'll call this as full set. And then this represents as one. And in here, I'll go and say sum of full set, and then say sales, right? And then hit okay. Let me adjust the size. And also I'll, I'll create a set which is current selections as well. So I'll move this in here and then change this to current selection. So current selections, you can type dollar in here or you don't have to type anything, you can leave it on. For now, I'll, I'll leave the dollar on. And here I can say um, current selections, which represented by dollar sign. Right, I'll make this a little bigger. So you see the decimal places as well. So if you see here, now if I make a selection on something, the current selection changes, right? But this one would never change, no matter what I select. I've just put only two fields for simplicity sake, but it just works, the behavior is same across multiple fields, okay? So that's your full set. So no matter what you click on, full set would not change or the value in full set uh, would not change, right? So this is useful way if you ever wanted to take the total of sales and you want to divide it by like total customers or something like that, where no matter what, you don't want your denominator to change. So that is when you can use this kind of expression. So let's go back. Right. And uh, the next one we've already seen, current selections, which are in green color, right? And then um, let's look at a bookmark example. So you can refer the actual bookmark ID within set identifier syntax or bookmarks are identified as set identifiers. Okay, so let me go back and let me create a quick bookmark here. So I'll select something. So at least there is some data. So I'll select uh, Seattle and I'll go ahead and uh, hit okay and then say PM um, PM Seattle doesn't matter what the name is because we care about the ID so I'll leave this on and hit okay and uh, to check the ID if you're using click view developer then click on bookmarks and this is a document bookmark so in this case as this is a document bookmark hit more and you can see the ID in here. So ID says BM01. Right now, if I clear the selection, go ahead and create one more object. And I will say this as bookmark BM. Right. And hit OK. And change the expression to. So instead of one, I'll type BM01. If you see IntelliSense actually shows the name as well and the ID as well, right? So we want the ID, so I'll select the ID, hit apply and then hit okay. So if you see here, although I've not selected anything here, it is actually referring that bookmark. So it's the, the scope of BM1 is uh, the selection of Seattle. If you see here, if I select Seattle, my current selection value is same as what I've selected uh, in here for this expression where bookmark ID is used. So fairly simple, I hope that makes sense. And if I don't select, if you see the current selections, it's important, if I don't select anything, current selection values are not zero. So a lot of developers might think that if there is no selection, current selections might be zero. No, that's not the case. If you don't select anything, your set is all the data. It is almost selecting full set. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's move on and going back to PowerPoint. And then we have an interesting one, which is your 
previous selection and then we have uh, the next selection and then the previous selection right so let's go ahead and look at that right so let's go back so I'll add um, two more objects in here so just so that we can see the separation so for now I'll say um, set next and it is represented as underscore one and in here I would say underscore one don't worry the value is zero we'll, we'll come back to that and then in here I'll select um, I'll remove underscore we wanted to go to the previous selection so just previous or back it's the same thing and then leave this on and also copy the current selection box one more time so now if you see here this previous selection is same almost same as like your back button and then this next selection is same as your forward button so what I mean by that is if I've not selected anything there is the back button right back button basically selects whatever is my previous selection state so as I've said in previous lesson all your selection states are actually tracked across the application so possibly my previous selection might have been Seattle which is why it's showing the number which is the bookmark number for Seattle more likely that would have been the case just to validate whatever I'm saying so let me hit back button don't worry about these numbers hit back right so it is actually Seattle which is why we see the number uh, which is related to Seattle and if you see now you see this has the forward or the next selection has some numbers in there because the forward button is enabled which is why you see that there are some numbers in here so if I hit forward again right this should become zero because there won't be any further forward selections in there in the selection state right so this becomes zero and my current selections is the same number and then this becomes that this becomes my Seattle number so I can hit back twice right and then you can see the forward selection is related to the Seattle one because if I hit forward it'll become Seattle again here so Seattle which is why it showed the Seattle number earlier okay basically syntax is pretty straightforward all you need to remember is you have the ability to go back and go forward as well and also not just one selection you can have like you can step two what I mean by that is if I come here and then change this value to two right and then change this value so it jumps um, two steps ahead right and then if I hit back now right there are some values in here so if I hit forward forward and then the values are gone so let's go back and look at uh, more stuff and then we have alternate states so just to familiarize what is an alternate state so currently we've been talking about click view works as one model but there is this functionality where you can define a specific state or the selection state and you can refer it wherever you want it so i'll show you an example here right so let's go back so before i go ahead and show you an example of alternate states let me show you that there is uh, there are a couple of alternate states defined in this app or document so if I go into document properties, which is control alt D, and then if I click on alternate states, and then you will see there are two states which are already available in this app, right? So we're going to use that. So let me create a text box in here, properties, and let me change this to alternate states. Now, instead of the dollar sign, you have to define the state name, right? So if I say group one, that's my state name. Um, click view syntax checker doesn't like this and shows the red squiggly line because there is space between group and then the number one. So you can avoid that by using the square brackets, right? So you can see that in blue color and the squiggly lines are gone. And uh, hit apply hit ok right although the number is same as your current current selection state but what will be interesting is now if you make selection in London look at this one right um, 
if I select London, these number change, but this has not changed, right? So it doesn't respect the current selection state. It is because these objects are in the inheritant state. So let me go ahead and create one more object and go ahead and if you see here alternate states, this is your um, inherited state, right? And then let's go ahead and click on group one and hit okay. So that is what we have in here. So if I go ahead and hit 1997 right now or make selection on 1997, numbers for alternate states have changed. So if I select something else, again, numbers do change. Unless the objects are defined as that particular state, this expression wouldn't change. So where can you use alternate states? Basically, if you wanted to do comparison between two, two sets of things and you, you don't want to write complex expressions, then probably alternate states is a good way to do it. Then you can um, define one in one state, the other one in, in whatever state you want to define. And then you can see, you can straight away compare uh, based on the selection state. Let's move along and then let's look at the visual representation of how set identifiers work. Go back to PowerPoint presentation. And moving on. So we'll look at how set identifiers work internally. So let's assume that this is our data set. That's like our full data set right now. We have three columns, year, quarter, and month. So now let's assume that we were wanted to look at full set. So what does full set mean? If you see the blue color marker here, that means that's, that's your full set. Basically it's selecting everything in your model, right? As we have seen earlier. And then what if, if we wanted to select BM1, right? In this case, obviously the bookmarks are different. So in this case, the bookmark is actually year equals to 1996, quarter, Q4, month, October. This is how it would take the input set based on the bookmark values, right? And then just looking at one more example, let's say that you have an alternate state with group one, and then you have selected year equals to 1998 and quarter Q2. This is how it works. And just to clarify, I'm showing that in different colors so, so you can follow along. So I hope this makes sense. So just to show you how set identifiers work when you make a selection on a group or the alternate states, and when you make selections on bookmarks or basically current selections or full sets. So in next lesson, we'll look at set operators. Thank you for watching.